Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNoFoto.com and in today's video we're going to be looking at how you can adjust white balance or colour and levels um, on a webcam or pretty much any camera I guess for recording your YouTube videos. Um, in this particular case we're, I'm using the Logitech C920 HD webcam and the software I'm going to be using is Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Because uh, one of the problems you have when recording with webcams or any other cameras at home is kind of what you see here now, which is a very orange picture because I'm using tungsten tungsten lights. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to kind of show you uh, the, what you can do with Premiere Pro and you know, what effect the uh, different settings can have. And then in the second half of the video, I'll then show you how I actually do it in Premiere Pro with a screencast so you can, um, so you can see it. Um, actually in this room now, so basically I've got my, my, uh, C920 webcams are perched on top of my, my laptop up there. And basically I'm lit, lit by some tungsten bulbs up to sort of my, my right or uh, camera left. And so it's very, very orange. Now, again, the idea normally is that you wouldn't have this sort of situation, this sort of setup. And in fact, I've had to go into my uh, C920 and turn off auto white balance and auto exposure and all that sort of stuff in order to get it to look this bad. Um, because the actual auto white balance on the C920 is very, very good. Um, but for the purpose of the video, I've made it look worse than it you know, normally would be so that we can actually bring it back and uh, and improve the look of it. Um, but ideally, you'd always want to try and get it right um, in camera. And you can do this in a number of ways. You can do it by obviously using the, the white balance setting on the camera, or you could use it with uh, daylight balance bulbs, or you're doing... It, it's tricky to do a custom white balance with a webcam. Normally, the software isn't that advanced. The C920 is pretty good for, for, for doing that sort of thing. You can normally get the, get, get the uh, white balance um pretty close um so the the settings of the c920 are uh, it's on manual white balance manual exposure and manual gain and it's only the focus that is left on auto now when you're trying to attempt to do a video where you're going to want to put in um, some sort of adjustment to the uh, to the color on the video or in fact maybe you don't want to you just want good good color all the way through it's kind of important that you work in a um, controlled environment um, so for example in this particular room here normally the way I would do it is I might have the tungsten lights on a little tiny little bit but my main lighting would be, be two or three daylight balanced bulbs and that way the intensity of the light in the particular scene stays the same all the way through if you can imagine I was sitting next to a window and using a window for my light um, as the uh, clouds went over the sun, the light levels would go up and they would go down. So the video and hence would go darker and lighter. So then I would have to rely on auto exposure, which isn't too bad. Um, but normally we want to try and avoid things like auto exposure and auto uh, uh, white balance. Because as you introduce different things into the video... Um, the, uh, the the software will then will then compensate for that, and it will mean things important things, or maybe like your face or products you're videoing will change color too. But I tell you what, kind of to go against that, what we're going to do now is we're going to sort out this color problem. Um, so in Premiere Pro, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be using auto color, and I'm also going to add auto levels. And as you can see, it's a real quick and uh, very simple solution. And remember, I'm going to show you how to do this in Premiere Pro, you know, in the second half of the video. So the video should now look a lot better. Um, so you might well be asking, so, so what's the problem? Well, there isn't anything wrong with using auto color, or auto white balance or um, auto levels in, in your videos. But what can happen is as things change in the video, so maybe, I don't know, if I put my hands out and I put them towards the camera, um, you may well see the the colours of my face changes 
because the camera kind of sees the hole and it sees something of different color and it thinks there might be a cast and and to change it so not the camera the, the software the auto um the auto color so if i bring in something of a different color because auto color is constantly monitoring the video and changing it you can get almost like a flickering effect sometimes uh, which is at the end of the world but maybe you, d you don't want that in in your video um so if you can um, keep your camera shooting on a fixed exposure, fixed white balance, um, or maybe one of the presets, um, or a custom white balance. So as long as you're in a fixed lighting situation, you can apply an adjustment to the clip, which will be the same all the way through. Um, however, if you were in a situation, say you're outside or near like a window for natural light, then maybe you'd want to stay within the auto exposure mode for the camera. So the camera's l allowing for, for different levels of light, but try and stick to one white balance. So the colors aren't actually changing uh, that way as well. So you've had a good look uh, for the last few seconds at auto color and auto levels. Um, maybe you've seen some of the flickering that can occur. So let's turn those options off now. There we go, back to orange. <laughs> um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to use a really powerful part of Premiere Pro uh, Creative Cloud, and that's the fast color create corrector. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply a white balance using the eyedropper and sampling. I think I'll probably sample that Nintendo Wii. Um, so to my left, so camera right, um, because that's that's pretty pretty white so that should have sorted out the color quite a lot and now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to use the eyedropper in the fast color corrector to choose something dark behind me to kind of set the black level and I don't know there's probably something bright over there so I'm going to use that to set the white level so what do you think the video should look okay it's probably very similar to the auto levels uh, and the auto color adjustment we did before but we shouldn't get any of that flickering. If I like bring my hands closer and bring them out, or we bring in something of a different color into the video, everything should be consistent because the adjustment we've applied is an adjustment that just goes, it's the same adjustment across the whole of this particular video clip. Obviously in Premiere Pro, I've sliced this video clip into little sections so we can apply different adjustments at different times. The fast color correct is incredibly powerful and very quick to use. And as I said, the adjustment can be applied across a whole clip, a whole clip, meaning we've got a consistent look without that, that flicker. So let's turn these corrections off. Sorry for the camera wobbling there. And we'll look at our last solution. Okay. So this beauty here, this is the um, Lazolite or Lasterlite, Lasterlite. Expo balance and basically it's a fancy grey card um, that you can use to correct colour or white balance mainly for photography but you know you can use it for videography as well and it can help with exposure and contrast in, in, in your videos actually on the other side you can also muck around with exposure but that's that's for another video so what you can see basically here is we've got an aiming target in the middle We've got, um, I think that's 18% that's grey, which we could probably, which we will use for doing our uh, auto, our white balance. And we've got white and we've got black. So we can use those to kind of set the levels of our video that way. So again, in Premiere Pro, I'm going to fire up um, the fast color corrector and I'm going to use the eyedropper tool on the grey bit now. So hopefully that's gone some way to sorting out the color in the video. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, eyedropper tools for the black and the white point and I'm going to click on the black and then I'm going to click on the white. So that should help us with, uh, with contrast. Um, now the beauty of uh, something like the Expo Balance is that basically, well, as soon as you start a clip, you, you would you know start your your video recorder, maybe start your audio recorder if you're recording it separately. Kind of put this in front, just record a couple of seconds with it, put it down, carry on with the video, and then in Premiere Pro, you would then use that initial clip um, to adjust the color, adjust the contrast, then obviously edit it out, delete that bit, so you don't have it on the front. Um, and it's very, it's a good way to get very consistent. Uh, exposure and color across you know a whole different series of videos and different cameras if you're doing a multi-camera clip as well 
Okay, so there we go. We've look, looked at sort of three different ways of sorting out the color or white balance of your video and adding contrast as well. We've looked at auto color and auto levels, very fast, but you might end up with click, um, clicking. We've looked at using the fast color corrector in kind of a manual way by using the eyedropper tools to select uh, a neutral color area and a black and white. And then finally, we've used the expo balance uh, with the uh, fast color color creator to hopefully give us you know a pretty accurate color rendition and contrast rendition of what we would really like to see so what we're going to do now is i'm going to um, turn off the webcam fire up premiere pro and so you can actually see how i physically do these adjustments so you can use them yourself on your videos okay so here we go we're in premiere pro here's me up in the top right corner looking pretty orange let's add some auto color and some auto levels so all you need to do is go in the bottom left hand corner where you have all your project stuff just go into the effects bin and then you want to go to uh, adjust i think it is and then i don't know let's do auto levels first let's just click it drag it over on top of the video so it's kind of made everything look a little bit more contrasty let's grab auto color click and hold drag it all over dump that down there we go so that's a really fast change so if we go back that's what it did look like nice and orange and now we've got something that looks significantly better so let's see how fast and see how easy that is but again you may suffer from a little bit of flickering when you do that let's just go back in the history and now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a similar sort of effect but in a different way what we're going to do is we're going to go down we're going to go to color correction and we're going to set the fast color corrector we're going to drag it over onto the video drop, drop it onto the video and then up in the top left hand corner we've got you know this amazing tool here that's appeared which looks incredibly complicated and it can act in a little bit of a weird way i'm not going to lie i'm not completely sure why it does this but it seems to flick backwards and forwards so we do a white balance first so i'm just going to click on the color picker the eyedropper go over to the wii which is probably quite white select that and it's got rid of most of the color cast but it's still pretty flat so we're going to scroll down there we've got a black gray and a white level so now when i click these eyedroppers you'll notice the video kind of resets to what it was before and then it applies it all again so let's click on the black level and i don't know this dvd player looks pretty black down there that looks all right Let's click on the white level I know it's pretty bright up here in the top left hand corner that was probably pretty white let's click on that so there we go so that's what we did have nice and orange and that's what we got now which is significantly better as you can see a lot more natural um, not perfect by any means but you know we are just using a Logitech C920 and remember whenever you do do a video in difficult lighting conditions in other words you use something like tungsten lights or halogen lights a fair chunk of the color spectrum is actually missing so you can never get it completely perfect afterwards now let's scroll near to the end of the video and hopefully round about here I've got the hey here we go I've got the expo light so we're gonna select the video clip we're gonna use the fast color corrector we're gonna drag it onto that video clip and this time when we want to set the white balance all we do is we click on the white balance eyedropper click on the gray bit that sorts that out and then we're just going to slide down and we're going to click on the black eyedropper select the black bit and then we're going to select the white bit click on that and then um, we've got that so let's just play that a little bit that's pretty contrasty. I might even back that off a little bit because I think that is probably a little bit, a little bit too contrasty, isn't it? Um, probably great for a photograph, but I'm not quite sure if that's great for that particular video. So we probably want to, I'm just going to slide it down a bit. I'm just going to back off the levels on the blacks. Just to remove some of that contrast. There we go. I think that, that's better there. Just like that. So there we go. So in a nutshell, we've looked at auto color auto levels using the fast color corrector to kind of manually click on parts of the video and then we've used a, a like a gray card 
the expo light um, just to do it in a more consistent way at the end my name's rob from robnonphoto.com remember if you like the video please subscribe it really helps like and it put some comments down below if you're watching this on youtube um, and uh, you can contact me my email address is scalespeeder at gmail.com and uh, hopefully i'll see you again soon